Welcome to the webinar. I am James Timmons. Today I'm going to show you how to work with the Windows TrueType fonts in a large setting and how to uh, convert those into to Tommy stitches. Inside the Wilcom software, first we're going to go in, I'm going to navigate over to the left side. I'll right click on my letter A. That's going to open up my object properties. Here, I'll go in. I'll type in my text. At this point, I want to choose a Windows True Type font, not a Wilcom Satin Stitch Type font. So, in my lettering properties here, my text type. I'm going to scroll down. The first uh, type of text that you'll see uh, is the Wilcom text. You'll, you'll notice that because you'll see the little red satin stitch here. Uh, we want to scroll down until we see the two T's here. And these fonts here are your Windows True Type fonts, uh, the type of fonts that are used in Microsoft Word uh, and Corel Draw and programs like such as these and I want to go in and I want to choose a font um, that's going to stitch on a jacket bag and the font needs to be large and thick enough in order for me to use a tatami stitch for it and as I scroll down my list I see an Arial Black here it's a good nice thick font I'll select this font the next step here um, I have the ability to go in I'm going to scroll my bar down here. Because I've chosen the True Type Windows font here, I'm able now to go in and I have a TTF conversion tool available uh, from my font properties here now. I'm going to left click this and of course that's going to bring up my conversion settings for my True Type Windows fonts. I have an option here to choose turning strokes, which would be turning strokes such as a satin stitch. I can match the ends, which will refer to uh, using the same stitch angle for the serif, if there's a serif available. Or I can do separate serifs, meaning that the letter itself will be stitched horizontal and the serif will be stitched vertical for larger text. Here I have a break angle here also. I have corner detection. These are uh, just settings inside the program here that um, I usually leave these as they are. I want to create overlaps here also. And the overlaps will provide uh, to not allow the fabric to show through, making sure that the columns are uh, overlapping properly. And here, um, I'm going to scroll down. I want to choose the complex fill this time because I want to, this is going to be a large design that's going to be stitched on the back of a jacket. So I'll select my complex fill. And at this point also, I can enter in a stitch angle that I could change later uh, if, I, if, I, if I need to. So I'll put a stitch angle in there at 30 degrees. I'll select OK. I'm going to create text. I left click here and I'll go on screen. And I will left click to place my text on the screen. At this particular time, the text is very small. I'm going to change that size. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up top to my metric tool. I'll left click. I'm going to change this to US. Okay. And at this point here, in order for me to make this 10 inches wide, um, I can move my cursor on the lower left corner or any corner, press my control key down or my shift key, whatever which I want to use. The control key here will um, allow it to go in proportionate like this. The control key will have it off center. I prefer to use the shift key here because that'll keep it centered on the page here. And as you can see the numbers here for my width, I want 10 inches and that's going to be good enough. And so I will release. Once I've released that, uh, now the next step would be to go in and change this satin stitch as I navigate up top 
to a tatami stitch. Okay. And with this, I want to be able also to add a border around uh, the text. That's going to be simple enough at this stage. Here, I'll navigate to my simple offset tool. I'm going to left click here. It's going to give me my simple offset properties here. Here I can go in and I have different options here as well. The spacing is actually the distance from the center of the outline will be at zero. Okay, And because I'm using inches, I'll place zero there because I want the border, I want the center of the border to be directly on the outline of my lettering. Okay, I want only a single offset here, so I'll leave this at one. And I do want to use a column C for a satin column for the border I have holes in these in the center of the letter B here so I'll have to go in and also check create offsets for any holes that are inside of the uh, lettering I'll navigate to, I'll select OK it places my text around my letters at this point now I can navigate to my pick tool I can of course go in now and change the color of the borders if I need to change the color of the borders here by just selecting on the bottom of my screen here. Okay, if I need to go in and adjust the column width for my for my satin stitches here, uh, all it takes is to navigate to the special drop menu here. And as you can see here for my column width, it has my width here at point uh, one one eight. If you use metrics, I'm just going to navigate here to my metric property here. And if I want to make this larger, I can make this 4.0 and press enter. And of course, it will go in, it will uh, increase the, the column width here for my borders. Next on the list is to go in and to make sure that the underlay stitches are accurate. As I select here, I'm going to choose my underlay stitches under my object properties. And here, I'll just use a center run underlay stitch for this. Now the width of this is also uh, is that four inches. I can probably use a edge run for this also. Okay, and I'll also need an underlay stitch for my tatami stitch here as I select it here. As I go to my underlay, I'll need an edge run underlay stitch and also a tatami underlay stitch for the underlay for that. And as always, you want to remember to save this also. So I go to File, I choose Save As. TBNG. I click Save for the EMB file. Okay. If I want to run a test stitch out on my stitch data file at this, at this point here, I'll go into File and I'll choose Export Machine File. Here's my name, here's my stitch type here, and I'll click Save. So for this one, now I'll press my zero key here and I want to see a stitch here with the stitch player if I navigate as it goes in and does my underlay stitch and I can speed this up by escalating my tab goes and continues as it does the underlay as it continues to stitch okay and it'll go in next and do the outline around the, the borders okay now I'm gonna stop this here so now at the exit points of my lettering here um, I saw that the exit point 
there, they're stopping in the center, causing the lettering to stitch from the outside to the inside like this. If you prefer to have it exit on a corner, which I do, um, I can go in and you can adjust that by just selecting the text. I'm going to right click on the text and I'll scroll down and I'll choose break apart. It's going to break apart my text as you see here and on the T I'm just going to select it here inside my color object list and I'll navigate and I'll select the reshape tool and I just want to make sure that it's stitching at, to the corner here just like that on this one I'm going to press tab to advance it to the B and again I just want to make sure that when it goes into stitch it starts here and I want to exit here as I press tab to the end the same thing here's the exit point here's that line in the fill I want to go in and at any corner I can go in and place that in there I'll press tab to advance it and I want to exit right here and start here that one or I can slide this down based on my stitch angle okay I'll press 0 for my full view. If I want to see this at 1 to 1, I can press my number 1 key on my second row up top on my key my keypad. Making sure also that the stop and start is in the center of the design, which is where my white cross area is here. If you want to make sure that everything is centered with the design and on the work page, you can select that here and you can navigate to your position X and Y and you can make this zero and position zero here as well and press enter and that way uh, the design is now centered from with inside the design and also on the work page. Thanks for coming and I hope you learned something from today's class and I hope to see you in another webinar and we will cover more uh, complex topics. Thank you. Have a good day.